I'm David Mason. I'm the Director of Public Health for the Town of Sandwich. It's uh, Monday, March 23rd. Just checking that. We're losing track of days here. And uh, we're in the third of a series of videos uh, to update you and provide information with regards to coronavirus. Uh, we've been dealing with a lot of public health issues and, telling, and updating you as far as how we are handling those, but a component of that is mental health issues. Uh, anxiety happens to be one of the largest uh, mental health uh, uh, challenges that we have in society, and, and so today we have uh, social workers from the Sandwich School District uh, to, to help us out and to share some information uh, with parents' home and the kids' home and, and the anxiety of, of uh, what's going on in the world today. We're going to provide you some tools and some information on how we can cope with this. Uh, but before we start that, we're going to start with uh, an update of our COVID-19 team, uh, what we're doing in town here with Chief Burke. Thank you, David. Uh, to update folks, the team has been meeting every day since March 2nd. We're on our fourth operational period this week. Just to update you uh, with the concerns of personal protective equipment, the fire department um, has a supply right now. We did receive uh, some additional equipment, not only from the state, but also I have to shout out to Abishan Hardware, Ace Hardware, uh, Sean Brainy at Mad Hatter Painting donated a bunch of masks this week. Uh, so we've had a bunch of donations from the public that has uh, increased our stock, so I'm happy to report that. We do have all five ambulances staffed and, and ready to go as needed. And, and again, the team uh, continues to meet every day, uh, produces a plan every week um, to hit this um, coronavirus head on. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Chief. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll start with uh, Joe Dowick. He's the lead for the Sandwich School District. Uh, so he'll provide an introduction to us uh, for this discussion today. Joe? Good morning. I just wanted to uh, start off saying that uh, the school district starting today will be having grab-and-go breakfast and lunch available to all children within the community. Uh, starting tomorrow, we'll also have food bags available for uh, anybody within the community, we were fortunate to receive a huge donation on Friday, uh, which will help afford, hopefully, afford some relief to the families that are food insecure within the town. Uh, we are fortunate in Sandwich, we have an amazing behavioral health team uh, who have all been involved in this effort, um, and I'm going to defer all of my questions to them. I'm actually going to set, step off and bring Alyssa Pistelli on. Uh, so on the panel, we'll have Alyssa from Forestdale, we have Connor Green from Sandwich High School and STEM Academy, and Diana Barboza from the Oak Ridge School. Very good. Thank you very much, Joe. Some of the issues that are out there is, as far as, you know, with parents at home and the kids at home is um, how, how do you deal with a young child, honestly, without alarming them? And, uh, and then how do you deal with the situation in, in which you have uh, uh, the children at home that are anxious and afraid, and, and maybe even some of the parents and how that communicates? So for the elementary school, um, we've been sharing with parents um, and giving them the advice that, number one, turn the TV off if you can in their presence. Try to get updates when they're doing other things um, because it is confusing and they can't really understand everything that's going on. They hear catchphrases and they're trying to make sense of it all. Um, we also have been on the district website. Um, we have a blog for Forestdale families. It's for everybody, really, but um, just to give parents some resources on how to talk to kids. Um, Joe was just saying that Brain Pop is a website that is geared towards young children and it has a wonderful um, resource on there explaining the coronavirus. Um, and you know, we, as we were talking earlier, we really want parents to just be focusing on some nice, calm, easy activities at home. Um, yes, it's important to practice your math facts and your reading, um, but that we don't want that to stress them out. They're really out of their routine right now, and it's important to mix in a little bit of practicing their academics, but also taking this time to kind of relax and take it easy. Um, and then the other thing before I turn it over is just make sure that you are reaching out to us. Um, we are still working. We are still talking with families. We're still here for you. So um, it's important. Just email us. And if you're having any child-specific issues, we're happy to help. Very good. Thank you very much. Very good. And what age group do you, uh, do you mind? So I'm at Forestdale. It's okay. pre-K through second grade. Very good. Just for those who aren't aware yeah. or have kids in the school system. And then as far as uh, Connor, uh, uh, what age group are you in? Uh, grade 7 through 12, so STEM so, Academy and, High and School. And the same? 
Three to six, okay. So, I mean, as far as the questions I asked for the age three to six? I would also say that it's good to empower children to know that they, are, they do, can do things to help keep everybody safe, focusing on hand washing, focusing on social distancing, and understanding that they giving them power back in the situation where they might feel a little bit powerless. Okay, so, so as far as this time also, we turn off the TV, how do we keep them anchored and busy? You know, at, at this point, you know, as far as, you know, we have social distancing, they're not with their friends, you know, what, what's some thoughts on that? So I think one is to play games with your kids. We have this great opportunity to actually reconnect with our kids, so that's one thing that you can do. Another thing is that I've seen a lot on um, Facebook where there's rainbow hunts that you can go in your car and, and keep social distancing, but kids can go out and look at other people's houses to see rainbows that other students have put up. I know that there's a, a parade that the teachers are going to put on. Um, so I think that the community is coming together to create a lot of different opportunities, but really, just play. And I think to add on too, I think structure is really important uh, during this time. I think with the absence of school, students as well as the adults are used to having that structured day. So if there's any way you can incorporate that with limiting time to social media, to the TV and spending time as a family, um, and also engaging in things like physical activity. I think uh, often people are now stuck at home. Not necessarily the case. Uh, you can get outside and go for a walk, obviously keeping social distancing in mind. Uh, you can do kind of in-home workouts. Uh, we talk about mindfulness as a big thing, whether it's deep breathing, the stuff you can find on YouTube, um, as well as art, uh, music, even reading on your free time, but doing things is, I think, really important too. Because I think probably the, you, you know, the, the older they are, the bigger the challenge is also, you know, I've had friends talk to me in town with, you know, their teenagers, high school age, you know, that they, they just don't want to, you know, they, they don't, they're not listening to what's going on or they're invincible to it or whatever. And I think that's a concern. I mean, really, it's at that point, parents have to step up and be parents to address that situation. But it is is a different group. Any, you know, any other thoughts? Uh, you know, you deal with that the the teenagers as far as that aspect. Is, as far as what do you get them to do to listen? You know, that's a great question, um, and it's challenging. I think even this aside, that's a challenge we have. Sure, it um, is. For, with everything. Uh, I think it starts with, I know Sucatino actually mentioned another social work in the district, uh, modeling behavior is really important, I think. Fabulous. So as a caregiver, acknowledging how you're feeling as well and giving a space for uh, your children also to hear that and express themselves too is important. But I think modeling these um, positive behaviors and way to kind of cope through this is really important to start. Also for teenagers, uh, giving them something to do, some responsibility, some leadership roles at home, whether it's caring for younger or actually having them do things, um, also kind of helps with that buy-in. And we talk about um, empowering them to do some, I guess, take some Fabulous. So no, that, yeah. that, that is great. The, uh, it, you know, and just speaking to that as far as getting outside in that teenage group too, I mean, we drive around town and we see people out there playing basketball, five and five. You know, it's like, okay, that's not social distancing. You know, keep in mind as, they, as they're out there five on five, they're passing the basketball around. And everybody's touching that basketball. So here is one thing that I've, I've been putting out there. Don't be a vector. You know, and I've said this before, vector is kind of a disgusting negative term. You, you don't want to be the one passing it along. You are a vector at that point. And you're potentially bringing it home, even though you may just be with your friends. Outside is one thing. Direct, direct contact is another issue. And we're not talking, when we talk about getting outside, go for a walk, we're not talking about immediately getting in contact with each other other either. So I just wanted to take the opportunity to pass that along since we were talking about the, the high school age kids also just and parents should be aware of that also. Is there anything else anybody else wants to add? Uh, thoughts J uh, Chief? Uh, uh, nope as a father of a couple of teenagers it is challenging uh, <laughs> definitely at this time and I think what Connor said about modeling behavior is important and structure. Yep, uh, keeping routine and and plugging times in what they're used to with their schedule, I think, is is important. So I was glad to hear that that being reinforced. Very good. So I think that goes for sleep schedules, too. Mm. It, this is not vacation. And kind of having people realize they need to go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time. Lack of sleep can lead to an increase in anxiety. So just being aware of that and keep them on the same no, sleep schedule. Fabulous point. Because, again, you know, it's that it, people were looking at it as it's a snow day. So and it's not a snow day. You know, this is something we need to achieve and everybody needs to work to it, on it together. Any other thoughts? 
No, we're good, I guess. So I, I want to thank you all for, for being here today, for helping us address that issue that's out in the community. We know it's there. You know, some of us don't see it because it's behind closed doors, but we know it exists. It exists with all of us, really. You know, even, even you know, over the weekend, I had to take a step away for a few hours because sometimes it gets too overwhelming. I didn't, I had to turn off the news because it gets to be too much. So you need that break. So we're, we're just asking that everybody not only take care of your, your, your physical health, but also your mental health. And just a few other updates as, as we're talking. I know that um, just, just an awareness because I, you know, I do monitor social media, uh, others of us do, and there's a concern that perhaps not enough was being done. We're aware of the situations that are out there that you're concerned of. Some of it takes time because it takes a legal process in order to address it also. And at the same time, many of the town departments here, not only are we dealing with this, the, situ the coronavirus situation, we are doing our regular jobs also. Uh, you know, as far as uh, as far as police and fire, uh, uh, myself and the health department, there's, there is still work that's still going on that we need to address that's part of our daily routine, and we're addressing this also. So we understand your concerns. Have some patience. We're, not, we're, we're aware of it, and we're not ignoring things. They will be addressed in a timely manner. And because uh, at the same time, I have to, uh, Board of Health will be looking at uh, taking further actions uh, in the community uh, to increase social distancing, and the board will be meeting uh, in the near future uh, with regards to that. So again, I want to thank everybody here today uh, for, for today's uh, public service announcement, and we'll be doing more in the near future. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.